Uh, all right, I believe the uh, council member is here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, let's give us a few minutes. Oh, we should go ahead. All right, Olivia, uh, Olivia, you want to? You can go ahead. I'm sorry. It's mine. All right, Olivia. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Jared. Um, the first item is item number one, an application for certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, docket number 15-4553, blocks 261, block 261, lots 9, 110, and 111. And this is an application for 295 to 299 Hicks Street in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District, three vacant lots, and the application is to construct three new buildings, and this was uh, presented at the public meeting of September 23rd, 2014. Reopen the hearing. Good morning. My name is Krista Demardash. Thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to represent our building. As Olivia said, we tried to address all of your concerns from our last hearing. Um, and I'll start just quickly. Here's the site again. It's currently um, an empty site, but previously it was a a uh, 25-foot brownstone with a church adjacent, and it, they were both taken down sometime after 1944, and the site's been uh, vacant ever since. Um, at the top is the opposite side of the street of Hicks, um, block from Jerome Estate, and sorry, and uh, below that is the east side, which is where our lot is right here, and this just gives you an idea of the style and density of the block itself. Um, the view on the top is our revised design, and this is what we presented to you um, earlier in September. Um, just starting from the top, what we did was we looked at um, taking the cornice and separating it into three separate cornices to um, give us that more um, visual of three separate as opposed to one large 50 foot. Um, we then looked at the proportion of the windows with those um, typical, both narrow and wider uh, around the neighborhood, and it, as a result, the windows became a bit narrower and um, a bit lower on both, um, both the middle and top. Um, the previous 
submission, we had these bay windows here on the second floor. We moved them down to the ground floor and eliminated one. We eliminated one to create a pattern of ABA, which you'll see later is something that um, is, exists in these three, three distinct row houses and 50 foot wide lots. And then we changed our uh, entrance as well. So here, um, again, in uh, architectural drawing, you can see our proposed and the previous that we have here. Um, there were several examples in the neighborhood of 50-foot wide lots that have been divided into three separate um, row houses. And we looked, took, took a look at these in particular. This one is actually um, just down on the same block, just a little bit across the street from us. And um, here it really shows you the example of the ABA. In this particular building, they took the center one and they moved it forward of the two on the end that really helped break it up to make it look like three separate. Um, this one is behind um, ours street on Garden Place, and it's these three here. And it's a much simpler, and I can't really say that you see as much the difference between each one. They're more uniform, but there's something about the proportions and the entrance way that appeals to you know not only us but also the staff at LPC. Um, this one is on Henry Street, and what they've done here is they've given again the ABA by having a, stu a raised stoop. The center one is a stoop going down, or you know entrance going down, and then this one is the stoop on the end again. Um, in all three examples. Um, the cornice is also delineated. In this particular one, there is no cornice. It's an arch in the center, so it breaks up the three cornices. These, like ours, are look like they touch, but they actually don't, and there's you know a little bit of a space between each one, as the same with Henry Street here. This final one is Sydney Place, where again, we see this ABA rhythm by, um, what they did was they put a, a, um, a recessed brick between each one to help break up the facade from being 50 to the three um, narrow ones. Um, this is a, takes a look at our entranceway and um, the two on the top are both um, just down the street from ours and um, these are neighboring ones as well. We went with a, a wider plaster here and um, we had a triangular pediment before and we went rectangular this time. And although it's not as ornate as these, there is still a little bit of detail and delineation to it. Here are some examples of bay windows that exist on a parlor level, you know, all within a couple blocks of ours and the, difference, um, the different types of detailing um, Ours would be like a heavy gauged metal, but we like the way this sets back here, and we like a little bit of the kind of stripped down detailing that you see here. Um, on the right, you can see <coughs> examples of the cornices where they've been separated. Here's the one on Henry Street, a detail of that. And then this is Garden Place behind ours again, where they break apart the cornices and they just about touch at the top. And this is an example of across the street of how the um, cornice would turn back to the building. And you can see it. Okay. Um, these are views from uh, different points coming down the street. This one here is from across the street. Up here is when you're closing in on the um, front entrance here. And here as you're coming down Jerolaman Street and you can see the stoop and how it steps out here in the buildings. Um, on the left, we have the view uh, coming down Jerolaman towards the site here on the left and here coming up State Street with the site here on the right. The site plan, um, which is virtually unchanged except for we made some modifications in the width of the stoop based on um, you know, our survey of the neighborhood and the widths of stoops in these size buildings. We don't really have much changes other than lowering the, the bay window, which you can see on this level here, here, and here. And I don't know if you want me to go 
quickly through. No, I think that's lines. fine. I think that's fine. Are there uh, questions for the applicant? Yes, Roberta. Um, in the, on one of the sheets, it shows the cornice, but it looks as if it's all combined. Is that paint, or is that just a defect in the? Is that just a defect on this drawing? Yeah, I think it's the, the, the because it doesn't. Surrender. That one actually yeah, looks you can good. See it it's there. just the other. <laughs> yeah, and. And uh, so it's just the door. Uh, the other question is those, um, the win so these are windows under the bay window. Are those windows to, that's windows to the, what, the basement level? Yeah, there, or there's, a, or there's a, a cellar level, mm -hmm. and that's a low window, um, which is actually very, very typical of the style row house um, to bring light and air into that lower level there. Not required light and love because it is a cellar level, but just to bring some. Okay, uh, are there other questions? Any other questions? All right, thank you. Um, I think uh, we can discuss this. I think they've been very responsive. And uh, I think they've actually carefully looked at the details. And uh, I, I actually see this as very consistent with the character of the neighborhood and totally appropriate. Yes. I'll just add as a resident of the neighborhood, I can. Yes. I echo those comments. Um, I think, um, um, you know, there, there are two ways to go. It could have been a much more contemporary house that we might have been excited to see as well, but I think you've chosen the more um, uh, traditional approach to a townhouse, and I, I th think you had it quite right last time, but I think our staff probably helped, and I think you also uh, opened your eyes to uh, some of the details that you just presented and have made um, a quite attractive series of House is very appropriate uh, to the district, so I think they're great. Any other and, uh, yes, just uh, to, to pile on there, uh, I know we were critical of the way the bay windows looked in the first um, render rendering of this, and um, and I I don't think anybody actually suggested the idea of eliminating them at the second floor and bringing down two instead of keeping the three, and I think they did a fantastic job with that. Thank you. All right, so why don't we? Um, read the resolution. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Thank you. Um, in the matter of uh, 295299 Hicks Street in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District, um, the application is to construct three new buildings. And uh, I recommend approval finding that the construction of three new buildings on this vacant lot will restore the continuity of the street wall, thereby strengthening the streetscape that the existing streetscape displays a variety of building types and scales, including flat buildings, carriage houses, single family row houses, and a firehouse, and that the height and massing of the proposed buildings will be in keeping with the scale of the neighboring buildings on the street. That the design of the buildings is based on the typical 19th century row house form with an areaway, a raised basement, a parlor floor entrance and stoop, regular punched window openings and crowning cornice, which is consistent with the organization of buildings and areaways throughout the streetscape and district. That the material palette of the brownstone finishes red brick and painted metal will be harmonious with the adjacent buildings and will help the buildings blend into the surrounding streetscape. That the features and detailing of the proposed facades, including the rusticated base, cast stone lintels and door surround, paneled bay windows and molded cornices with friezes will recall typical design elements found in the Brooklyn Heights Historic District. That the scale and proportions of the various architectural elements are harmonious and relate well to the overall scale and composition of the buildings. That the facade organization fenestration and placement of the bay window result in a clear distinction between the three buildings and are based on careful study of similar row, rows of narrow two bay wide houses within the Historic District that the simply detailed ironwork will support the unified appearance of areaway ironwork throughout the streetscape, and that the rear facades will be simple in design, residential in character, and well-scaled to their context, that the penthouses will be well-scaled to the buildings and only seen from the public thoroughfares at limited vantage points, thereby not overwhelming the buildings or streetscape, and that the depth of the buildings and their projection into the central green space will be consistent with other buildings within the block. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This application has been approved.